I must confess. And I think it would be beneficial for you all to hear what I have to confess. Mm -hmm. I was getting dressed this morning to come to church, and my wife said, I didn't tell you this last night, but I got a call from our opener, our board member. She mentioned her earlier, so I can say it. Sally called, and so we got to get here early in the morning because Sally usually comes in on Sunday morning and open the church. She's going to be here for those of you who ride early. So she said, we got to get there early this morning because Sally won't be. I said, well, where is Sally? She said, uh, well, she called last night or early this morning from the hospital. She didn't have no information as to what was wrong with Sally. So my head went immediately to all of the people who are out. And I was thinking, you know, we got so-and-so sick, so-and-so, and so-and-so. I said, wow, this morning, it's just gonna be two or three of us. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, well, you know, we still gotta go, we gotta do what we gotta do. <laughs> Even though there will only be a few of us. And then the spirit hit me. What difference does it make? You have to do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Regardless to who's there, you don't have to count the people. I will take care of that and them. You just go and do what you're supposed to do. Don't let me have my end. And I got to think, you know, God will give us the desires of our heart yes. if we trust him. So I said to myself then, that's a low expectation on my part. Yeah. Just go and do what you have to do and expect the best. Mm -hmm. and, and look at the people who are here. I had no idea that this many people would be here. So God blesses us even in our shortcoming. Yes. Because you know, I, I admit that I slipped. See, that should not be part of my thought pattern. Who's here and how many is going to be here. If there's one person here, I need to show up and give him, that person, everything I got. Amen. Everything. Because that is what I have been chosen to do. So, I was willing to come and do it, but I still had that little bit of thought. And the point is, the enemy will throw anything that he can out there to block you or to cause you to stumble. Mm -hmm. But in that thought, it takes me back to last week. I'm not complaining, but last week I woke up with a, with a problem again about our revival that we had, about you know the attendance and people not coming and people not showing up. And again, I was chastened. To, you know, just what are you doing? Trying to be me? God said, are you trying to be me? Just go. And then he showed me a, a vision of people and it brought me around to my senses and it have brought me to a place where you're going to see a new person this year because of what I watched and what I saw and that was that we need to have I can't even think of <laughs> we need to have commitment we need to have commitment attendance and a thought pattern of expectation and that commitment is the operative word and that is a commitment to attend and a commitment to serve. Amen. 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 And the way I write this is because in the early days of the early church, the people, wherever they were at the day of the Passover, they left that place and everybody went to Jerusalem for the Passover. Amen. Everybody. No matter where they were, in their lives at that time. They dropped what they were doing and went to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
And that, that brought me to the realization that, you know, it doesn't matter what we're doing on our day of worship. We go and worship. And see, again, into my personal thought mind, you may not want to go there because it's not all that in secret. <laughs> but what I was thinking is that we have an obligation to preach and to serve the people. But we should not be uh, complacent or we should not get into a, a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. See, because I was thinking again last week as we were getting up to go and all of this come to me that, you know, the doors of my church is going to be closed. And every time you close the doors of your church, visitors show up and the church is closed and they say, well, you know, that church is closed. Again, that's not my problem. That's not my problem. We need to step out of our comfort zone. Amen. And if it, if we're going to have service out in the field somewhere, go out in the field and have the service because that's where God has sent you. Amen. He will take care of all of the rest of the stuff. Yep. So this is a thing that I'm saying. We, we get into a zone to work if we don't come here, then there's no church today. Mm -hmm. And in that revival, that's an I'm going to quit as soon as I say this <laughs> one thing. <laughs> but it's just strange how things reveal itself to you that we get into that comfort zone that I'm thinking that I need to be here every Sunday morning. But if God <laughs> says go out in the field, I should be out in the field and just be satisfied with that. Because that's where he had said we should be. We should go up here. We should have this big gathering for everybody come together and worship God. But the, the last thing that I'm going to say is that while we were at the uh, revival, the first two nights we sit in two chairs, one row back from the front. And the third night, I don't remember what happened or what happened, but I put my books in another chair back there and went and sit back there. And I was told, you're sitting in this other couple's seat. You see what I'm trying to say? You see how, how we get into a mold and we just do these things without even thinking. And I was told, you're sitting in these people's seat. I says, well, okay. So the people came in, I looked at them and they looked and they went and sit somewhere else. <laughs> and it was kind of cool there. So I was talking to the pastor, the host of the church, and I said, man, it's cold in here. You got, he said, no, it's warm everywhere. He said, but over on that side, it's warmer than it is over here. For some reason, it's always warm over there. I said, well, well let's go over there then. So I got my bride, and we went over there. <laughs> and we sit down. And lo and behold, they said, you're sitting in Pastor Ray's seat. <laughs> I said, no. But I didn't move. I didn't move. I sit there. And when Pastor Ray came in, sure enough, he came over on that side. And he came and he patted me on the chair. Hey, how you doing? I said, oh. I said, oh, Pastor Ray, I'm sorry I'm in your seat. He said, oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. And he sit down right behind and then when the worship started, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, now nah, I see why you came over here. You came over here because this is the worship inside. You know, <laughs> but the point I wanted to stress is you see how we just, one week at a church, we had already established our territory. Because we sit in those same two seats for the first two nights. And I don't know why I sit over in the other people's seat, but I did. And then I moved over <laughs> to the other people's seat. But those seats were established. But that's just uh, something that brings you into where we are today. Here we are at another service. And I'm going to have to deviate from what I want to do. You know how you get ready and you get your little notes together and you come and you prepare it. But again, as I look out, I, I see what I have to do and I have to give you what I got. I have to give you what I got. Mm -hmm. So we can't stay with what we're comfortable with or go with what we think or to go with what we get. And that will be the best for all because it's about him. Yeah. It's about him. And I am to ask you this morning, did you come expecting 
Yeah. See, because I should have come expecting you people to be here. Instead of saying, oh, I ain't going to be nobody. Did you come expecting? And the, the point of coming expecting is to receive what you're looking for. You see, when you go to Smith's, you go in there expecting to get groceries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have something you want, you're disappointed because that's what you went there for. And when you get what you went there for, and you're on your way out, you stop at a checkout stand, and the first thing you do is reach for your wallet because you're expecting to have to pay for this thing. See, I'm saying that when we are expecting, we generally will get what we are expecting. It is, again, delighting yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And expectation expectation brings on that desire. You don't do anything that you don't want to do because you don't want to do it. But the things that you do, you do them because you are expecting a result. So this morning I ask you, why did you show up here? You came Expecting. If you did not come expecting, then you're got not going to leave with anything. You may hear something that I said, but it won't be anything of value. It'll just be something new that you picked up. So when you come expecting, you should have that in your mind. I am going to church this morning to get fed. I am going to church this morning to get healed. I'm going for it. I'm going for whatever you come for and expect to get that. And that is what you will leave with. Because God will give you the desires of your heart. You see, if you come here expecting, and I get up here and tell you, well... This morning, there's not enough of you here for me to preach to, so I'm just going to sing a couple of songs and we'll all go home and try it again next week when there's more people here. <laughs> but if you come expecting something, you're going to leave with it whether I say anything or not because God will give you the desires of your heart. The point I'm making here is that I cannot motivate you. If you come here not expecting anything and waiting for me to fulfill your desires, you're going to leave blank. And then you'll tell all your friends, yeah, I went to that church down there. They got nothing. They got nothing. I, I went there and didn't get nothing. This guy said a lot of stuff, but hey, that's what preachers do, talk all the time. <laughs> so you see, you have to prepare yourselves. And come expecting. Come to receive whatever it is that you desire or whatever it is that you need because you have come into the house of God. The house where the supplies are limitless. There is no end to God's supplies and to what God can do. So whatever you can dream or conjure up in your mind, God can fulfill that. Amen. But you have to be the motivator. You have to come expecting that. And that's what you will get. In the book of Matthew chapter 11, Jesus speaks to the multitude and he asks them, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? And I think he asked them two or three times, for what did you go out in the wilderness to see? And then he gives them a couple of examples. He said, did you go out there to see a man dressed in fine clothes? Which meant, no, they would not go out into the wilderness to see a man dressed in fine clothes. You would go over to the palace where the king is, where people dress up to show up. So you didn't go out in the wilderness to see people dressed in fine clothes. And then he asked them, did you go out to see the wind blow the bushes or the weeds? He says reeds, I think. He said, did you go out to see the wind blow the reeds? 
that you don't have to go out into the wilderness to see the wind blow through the trees or through the wind. You can just look out your kitchen window. You see your plants blowing when the wind blows. So you didn't have, he said that they went out there for a purpose. He said, then for what did you go out there to see? You went out there to see a prophet. John the Baptist was out there preaching. He said, you went out there to see a prophet. But then he says that you saw more than a prophet. So you see, they went out there expecting one thing and they got more than they went for. They got to see more than a prophet because John was saying stuff that they had never heard before. You see, they went out there to hear the prophet prophesy and said, the Lord is coming and he's going to bless you. and all But John went out there and said, repent. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. They didn't heard nothing like that before. Repent from what? They didn't know what he was talking about. So John is saying stuff that they don't know anything about. Said, so, yeah, I baptize you with water, but he who's coming after me is going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. And they, whoa, <laughs> he's going to put some fire on me? He's going to dump me in the fire? No. See, they saw more than a prophet. They saw a man who was the forerunner to Christ. They saw a man who had come to make the way straight for Jesus. Amen. So they saw more than they were expecting to see. And this is what Jesus was trying to point out to them. That when you go out to see something, you will get the results of your desires. But you have to be motivated to go out. Mm -hmm. If they didn't go out there, they wouldn't have seen anything. But because they went out there, they went to get some information. They went to get fed. Mm -hmm. But they got more than what they went for, you see. They got a meal and dessert. And then a show. Because <laughs> John was dressed funny. <laughs> so you see, Jesus is teaching her, and he asked, what did you go out there to see? To let you know that when you are motivated to give of yourself and to get out of your comfort zone and to go out to seek, you shall find. Doesn't he say that in Matthew 6 somewhere? Yes. Seek and you shall find. Mm -hmm. Knock and the doors shall be open. Ask and you will receive. So you see, you have to be the motivator. Yes. And then he goes on. If we go over to Luke. No, Acts. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts in chapter 3. Because we want to talk about expectation this morning. I, I, I think that that is what we need to understand. That we need to prepare ourselves for what we're looking for. Yeah. But we have to know what we're looking for before we go out. And when we seek our, our desires and be happy that God is the provider, yeah. then we can have our desires of our heart. Yes, now, watch Acts, Acts chapter 3. It says that Peter and John was on their way to the temple to pray. And it says specifically that it was the last hour of prayer, the ninth hour, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that they went out to the temple to pray. And as they were going, there was a lame man, a man who could not walk, had never took a step in his life. He was brought and laid at the gate beautiful, it says. He's laid there at the gate beautiful, never took a step a day in his life. And as Peter and John is going to the temple for their evening prayer, it says that the man looked up and saw them coming. And he asked them for alms. Alms for the poor. Gifts for the poor. Give me some money for the poor. Whatever he said. He wanted something for him. But the Bible distinctively says that he looked at them with expectation. He said he looked at them expecting to receive something from them. You see, it says something. It didn't say he looked at them expecting money from them. It said he looked at them expecting something from them. It could be anything. A C&I dog. A cane. A cup. 
a glass of water, um, a wheelchair, just any. He was looking for them, expecting something. He was looking at them, expecting them to give him something. That's important that he had the expectation. You see, so him having the expectation means that if the Bible is true, then he has to get something. He has to get something because he is expecting something. And it says that Peter and John fixed their eyes on the man. And Peter, with his brash self, said, look at us. He said that for a purpose. The crippled man was probably dressed better than he was. He said, look at us. Because you're looking at us to give you something. Look at us. You're in better shape than we are. Somebody had a, a nice Escalade that drove you down here and laid you at the gate. We're walking. We've been walking for the last three and a half years. Look at our shoes, man. You got shoes on that have never been walked on before. Your shoes is better now. Mm -hmm. our, our coats and robes and stuff is tattered and dirty. We've been in the desert. We've been with Jesus three and a half years. <coughs> we haven't been working, man. We don't have no money. But the man had looked at them with expectation. And Peter and John had just received the power of the Holy Ghost a few days ago. So this is all we got. Peter said, look at us. Silver and gold, we don't have any. But what I do have, give I thee. I'm going to give you what I got. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And Peter was so anxious to see if what he had worked, he wrenched down, it says, and lifted the man up by his right hand, and the man leaped up. He got more than what he was expecting, you see. The man was 40-some years old, if you follow the story. And he had never walked a day in his life. But if you notice, he didn't have to go through the process because Jesus was on the scene. Amen. The process being, you have to crawl before you walk. Amen. He didn't have to crawl around and learn how to pull up on the table like most of us did. He leaped up and began to dance and shout and leap and praise God. You see, when he got what he got, he acknowledged where he got it from. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we don't get stuff because we've already got something, but we didn't give thanks for what we already had. Mm -hmm. Or where it come from. Mm -hmm. So the man got up and gave thanks to God. Mm -hmm. Leaping and praising God. But he had that expectation. Yes. Without the expectation, He'd still be laying at the gate beautifully. You know, some of our mentality, well, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Sure hope this guy give me something. And then you get that looking down look, no eye contact. I'm really hurting now. Can you help me out? He ain't expecting nothing. The man looked at them with expectation like, hey, give me some homes. Okay, how much? What are you going to give me? <laughs> and he received because he was expecting. I hope you understand where we're coming from this morning. That when we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give us the desires of our heart. And when we know that we have delighted ourselves in the Lord, then we should know that we're going to get what we ask for. Mm -hmm. Ask and you shall receive. Mm -hmm. Now there is a, another story in not Mark. In Mark, Mark 10. In Mark chapter 10, blind Bartimaeus. Mm -hmm. 
He knew exactly what he wanted. The, the premise that I come to you with this morning, that you should have thought of what you come for. You know what you need. So when you come to church, well, I need a, a new broom for my kitchen floor. So when I go to church today, that's what I'm going to be expecting God to show me. How to get a new broom. That's what you come expecting. You come expecting something. You come for a word from God and a vision. Blind boy, mate, blind boy Timaeus is the only thing that I can think of who knew exactly what he wanted. And it says that Jesus was coming through Jericho. And it says that the people begin to run towards Jesus because Jesus was coming into town and people had heard he was coming and they were rushing out to the edge of town to, to meet him. And it says that blind Bartimaeus, he was sitting by the highway. He's blind. He's sitting by the highway, probably with his cup and asking arms like the man at the gate, beautiful. And it says he heard the commotion of all the people going around. He can't see. So he's wondering, you know, should I get up and run too? Or, or is it safe to be here? So what's going on? And nobody's paying him any attention. They're going to meet Jesus. But it says that finally, Somebody paid him a little attention when it quieted down a little bit and said, Jesus is coming through. Well, at that point, Fort Vez did not rest easy. He got up and began to yell because he didn't know where Jesus was. He, they said he was coming, so he began to yell, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he heard the stir. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And somebody said, quiet down. Quiet down. Don't, don't, don't be yelling like that. We, we are a nice, intelligent city. We, we, we are upstanding. We don't want people out here acting a fool. Don't, don't be yelling like that. Be, be, be humble and, and be quiet. Let Jesus see how intelligent and how mannerable we are. Don't, don't be doing all that yelling. That's, that's idiocy, you know. Be a heathen. And he said when they told him that, he began to yell louder. <laughs> Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And it says that as they were coming, Jesus heard him and stopped. Quiet and still. And Jesus said, tell him to come to me. And somebody tapped him and said, he wants to see you. He wants you to come to him. Now, understand, he's blind, but it, 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 it caught my attention in the reading that it didn't say bring him. It says tell him to come. Which direction does a blind man go <laughs> when he comes? <clears throat> but watch the excitement of blind Bartimaeus. It says when the person tapped him and said, Jesus said, come to him. It says that blind Bartimaeus cast aside his garment. That is very important to the story. Because the garment that blind Bartimaeus cast away was the blanket that you had to have to be allowed to beg on the street. Mm -hmm. See, all, all of my growing up days, you see people in wheelchairs and stuff, and they'd always have a blanket across them. I often wonder, what was that about? And I, I, I assume now that it is because that, that was the legality of the times. That if you didn't have a blanket on in those days, if you didn't have a blanket, you didn't have the right to beg for arms. So blind Bartimaeus cast his blanket. And those of us who've been fishing before know what cast means. We throw that thing as far as we can get it from us. Blind Bartimaeus threw that blanket as far as he could throw it away from him. Why did he do that? Because blind Bartimaeus, he couldn't see any of the miracles Jesus had done, but he had heard about. 
And he knew that if Jesus ever came to where he was, that he knew what he was going to tell him. You see? People had been talking about it. it says Jesus' fame went far and near. So people had already told him what had happened. You know, a leper got healed over there. A blind man got healed over there. A crippled man was made to walk over there. And blind boy made his sitting there with his cup knew that as soon, as soon as Jesus ever get within voice reach of me, I know what I'm going to ask for. So it says that, that blind boy Tobias got up and went to Jesus. And Jesus asked him the question. I love it when Jesus asks the question. See, because I know he already knows the answer to the question. But he just asked. And it always fascinates me. I can never get over that fact. Adam, where are you? <laughs> Adam, Adam said, I'm over here, guys. Remember when Jesus asked, see, because you know Jesus knew where Adam was. He knows everything. Just like he knew what blind water made us want. He knew that blind water made us was sitting there. He knew that before he got there, and he knew that that was what he was going to do that day. He already knew these, know these things, but he asked the question. And it always intrigues me because I understand why he asked the question. Most people don't even know what they want. If Jesus walked in that back door and asked any one of us right now, hey, what do you want from me? We would say, uh, uh, let me see, Jesus, let me see. Now, I got this, I got that, I got that, I got this, I got that. I don't, uh, let's see now, do I want this or that or that? Or that? Well, Jesus, what do what you think I should have more? A car, a house, or a or, or blanket? <laughs> So Jesus asked blind Bartimaeus, what do you want? And blind Bartimaeus just said, I want that I might have my sight. Just, he knew. This is what I'm talking about. If we know what we want, then we can be pacific. And we don't have to stutter. We don't have to ask. The Bible says that a favorite prayer from a righteous man or better than a feather, meaning a prayer from your heart. So the thing that you want the most is what is on your heart. The thing that you want the most, you don't have to think about it. You just, there it is. And Black Motivator said, I want my sight. I want to be able to see. And Jesus didn't have to do nothing. The last blind man, if you recall in the book, that he did, he said, he spit on the ground and made mud pies out of clay and put it on the man's eyes in John 9. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to put no spit in Bartimaeus' eyes. Blind Bartimaeus knew what he wanted. He just spoke it out. And Jesus said, okay, that's it. Go your way. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were instantly open. Did you see what he said? The delight in the Lord. He had thought about it. He had had to be if he's thinking about getting his sight and knowing where he's going to get it from. Who do you think he was thinking about? He was thinking about Jesus. He was thinking if he ever come out this way, I, I'm going to just, oh, I'm going to, oh, just let him show up. Please, Lord, come. And he showed up. And blind brought him and said, I want my sight. And Jesus said, okay, go your way. You got it. Didn't lay hands on him. Didn't say no prayer. Didn't spit and make no mud. Just go ahead. And it says that blind Bartimaeus' eyes was open immediately. And it says that he followed Jesus. He followed Jesus. Are you following Jesus? I don't know, preacher. I ain't seen Jesus. If I ever see him, I'm going to follow him. <laughs> if he ever come through here, I'm going to follow him. No. You can follow him. Got my hand on him right now. You can follow him. And it says that blind boy made us follow Jesus. Once he received what he wanted, then... He surrendered himself. Mm -hmm. Understand. He got what he wanted. Now, he 
He's serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's serving the Lord. You see, soon as we get what we want, we're through with that. Now, I don't have to pray no more. I'm going to the club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm going to the club. Now, I'm going, I'm going and watch the pretty women on the boardwalk. I can see now, you know. <laughs> I used to sit on that bench and they passed and I smell that sweet perfume. And I said, boy, I bet that was a pretty one. <laughs> now I can go see them. I'm going to the boardwalk. No, it says born blind Bartimaeus followed Jesus. Amen. That is where he wants us, to follow him. But he wants us to be specific in our request. Yes. He wants us to know what we want. He wants us to anticipate the gift that he gives us. So when we come, come expecting. And again, I personally am going to be pounding and pounding on commitment because we have to come to Christ in order to serve Christ. Amen. And the least we can do is serve him after what he did for us. Amen. Yeah. That's the least we can do. So we need to start this year. I know some of you make New Year's resolutions. I frown on them. Because I know they're just going to ruin your day. <laughs> They're going to make you doubt yourself. They're going to make you look down on yourself. Oh, I can't do nothing. I didn't do it. Think about this. Just make it a goal to get involved, involved with God. Mm -hmm. Get involved a little bit more with God. Amen. I read my Bible last year maybe three times. Well, this year, set a goal to read it four times. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'll run across something you like and you might read it five or six times. Mm -hmm. But you're always going forward. You're always moving toward the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Make that commitment this year mm -hmm. to serve God and show up. Show up. Don't neglect the assembling together. We have a, a, a saying that we say here when, when a person don't show up for two or three weeks, we assume that they quit. We just assume that. That's not necessary. So all of that. But we assume that. So our outreach is to give them a call, see if they're okay, see if there's anything we can do, and then advise them. Well, since you haven't been here, and if you don't intend to come back here, please go somewhere where the Word of God is going for. Yes. We don't want you to just quit. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you didn't like me. That's fine. I'm not Jesus. You don't have to. <laughs> but maybe somebody can reach you where I could. Mm -hmm. So if you don't come here, go somebody. Go somewhere. That's the commitment that you need to make for yourself in Christ. That I'm going to show up so that I can be fed. Because if it's not in you, it cannot come out of you. Amen. So you've got to get it in you. So anticipate and come with expectation. Don't go to Smith's and just walk around in the store. Oh, sir, can I have you? Oh, no, I'm just in here walking around. <laughs> well, what did you come here for? Oh, I don't know. This is a grocery store. I just come. I'm, I don't know why I'm in. You came there for something. <laughs> so don't, don't come to church with that mentality. Oh, I'm just here. My grandma came to church all the time. And, uh, my family's been a big Christian church-going family, so I just show up. You're wasting your time, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Come expecting something mm -hmm. so that you will leave with the gift of God. Mm -hmm. He is the substance of all things. So I can't give you anything. God can. Mm -hmm. So come expecting mm -hmm. and you will receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes.
That is the word of God. You will receive. Ask anything in my name, he says in John 14, 15, 14, 14. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. Simple. Simple. So come expecting to receive something. If it's just a smile. I just want to see somebody who's happy. I just need to see somebody who's not negative. I just need to see somebody who, who don't look like the rest of my family. Whatever your reason <laughs> is. Just, just <laughs> come expecting something. Yes. So that you can be blessed by God. And the more blessings you get, the more blessings you can give. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you give us these avenues that we can travel down to learn your will and your way. Help us, Father, to be bold in your word. Help us to know our position in life, Father. Help us to know the power that you've given us. Help us, Father, to be what you want us to be. Guide us in the way that we should go. And help us to be a blessing to others. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together with people with like minds and to <coughs> feed on your word. You said in your word, Father, that how can they believe in you if they have not heard of you? And how can they hear of you unless somebody tells them about you? So Father, help us to tell people about you and guide us to the places where we need to be. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time together. And we thank you, Father, that you are, again, a God of mercy and of second chances. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for all that you are. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen. Amen. amen.